Ever wish there was an easy way to manage your farm? There is. Ag Expert Field isn't just designed for agriculture, it's designed for you. Analyze your data? Check. Plan your strategy? Done. Track your performance? Consider it tracked. Get the details you need to make your best business decisions. Ag Expert Field is all new and seriously easy to use. Hello and welcome to Canada's Digital Farm Show. I'm Ralph Pierce, Field Editor with Country Guide, here with Ken Brett, Regional Sales Manager with Alpine, to talk about their offerings for 2021, some of the challenges facing growers, and how the plant nutrient sector is responding. Alpine is an important addition to our demonstration plots tour, so tell us what you have that's new in the plots this year. In the plots at the Outdoor Farm Show site this year, we always try to profile up and coming products, not the old standard ones we've had for years. So there's two products we're mainly showcasing this year. One is in the marketplace this season, our Alpine F18 Max. It's a foliar product designed for all crops and a low usage rate. The other product, which isn't in the marketplace yet, we're, we're demoing as well as extensively using it in our research trials is called Alpine K19S. And it's a different product for Alpine from the standpoint that it's a companion for UAN solutions and co-applies co with them on corn crops at side dress or wide drop timing. Now, what have you seen from the plots that's impressed you the most? Well, with the F18 Max being a foliar product, it, it's used predominantly as a, a supplement to uh, bring crops through stressful times as well as a companion product for pesticide mixers. It, uh, it tends to green the crop up somewhat with its nutrient mix. It's an eight, four, six, but the nice part with it, it carries a full 1% zinc and manganese. So it's very heavy load of micronutrients in it compared to similar products. The other unique feature with it is our K-Tech potassium. And it's, we're finding moving the bar up on potassium nutrition. It, it's the most available form of potash you can get in a leaf foliar. It's a small molecule size and it also stays on the leaf very well. With Alpine K19S, the side dress product, it also features KTEC potassium. When, when KTEC is used on a soil application, it's extremely soluble. So it gets into solution for the plant roots to uptake. The KTEC potassium for soil application is unique from that it feeds the soil micro mycorrhizae, which we all know are key in getting phosphates into the roots. It's been proven that soil mycorrhizae actually prefer to feed on acetate, which is the carrier of potassium in the K-TECH uh, technology. We all know that agriculture in general, any sector of it, whether it's crops or livestock, is continuing to be under the, the watchful eye of outside people outside of our industry, whether it's activist groups or government bodies. Our uh, DSMs here in Ontario have their 4R certification. We have eight CCAs in Ontario, of which six of them have their 4R certification to make good 4R based uh, recommendations to growers. I've said for years, Alpine's products have been 4R before 4R was even a, even a word or thought of. We've, we apply the right amount in the right place at the right time of the proper product, highly available fertilizers to get the crop growing. We've always been very hands-on with growers. We can provide you know, basically cradle to grave setup and, and recommendations on their liquid fertilizer with equipment set up, tank set up, nurse tanks and agr agronomic recommendations. Where I see it changing more is the uh, growers using the Alpine team as a go-to for nutrient information. More every year, our, our reps are out in fields in the summertime taking tissue analysis of, of crops. So we're ramping up the, the nutrition side of it as well by really analyzing what's there at a certain time. And there's a lot more opportunities available to tweak the nutrients on those crops to try to maximize yields. There's a lot more site-specific balancing of soil nutrition going on, and thanks to Precision Ag, it has lent itself very well to that. You know, we, 
we can identify areas in fields that don't yield like they should or like the rest of the field. So usually a soil test is done and more often than not, it could be a pH issue or one particular nutrient that we can address with site specific applications. Every grower knows where the weak and the poor areas are. It's just now we have ways to, to map them better and identify them. Alpine's research program gets many replications per year on corn and soybeans and wheat. We don't bring a product to market unless it has been proven here in Ontario under our climatic conditions. We're seeing the fruits of these results now on our Alpine G241S with KTEC. It's, it's fully released and gaining good traction in the marketplace, offering an advantage to growers over our what used to be our standard Alpine G24. And it brings both a yield response and of course an economic payback to upgrade to that product. Welcome to Canada's Digital Farm Show. I'm Ralph Pierce, field editor with Country Guide, and today I'm here with Bob Thurwell, market development agronomist with Bayer, to talk about their offerings for 2021, the challenges facing growers, and some of the opportunities that may be just around the corner. Tell us what's new in hybrids and varieties for Bayer for 2021. Yeah, for 2021, Bayer Crop Science is offering another new bunch of corn hybrids and soybean varieties. We're going to have 12 new corn hybrids available for Ontario and Quebec growers next year, as well as seven brand new soybean genetics in the lineup. Probably the most exciting new part uh, to our plots this year, Ralph, is uh, our introduction of the Tercepta corn trait. So it's a new corn trait. Um, it's, it's a uh, trait that's introducing the Viptera trait into our VT Double Pro trait that we've had in the lineup for a few years now. So that combination of traits is going to add something that growers have been looking for for quite a while now. It adds protection to Western bean cutworm. The soybeans we're continuing currently with our Roundup Ready to Extend crop system. And so all the varieties that we have in the lineup uh, for 2021 will continue to be the Roundup Ready to Extend crop system. Talk a little bit about the evolution of relationships with your customers. How important is it for a company like Bayer to solidify your relationships with them over and above the seed they grow or the information resources that you provide? Yeah, I think grower relationships are very important to all of us that are in the field working with our farm customers. And we want to continue to build, build that trust with our customers so that when we come to them with a new solution or a new product offering, that uh, they have that trust in us as a local advisor using local data, uh, whether it's from our field scale trials, trials or our research trials at the research farms regionally that the grower can have some faith in us and enough experience and uh, back and forth over the seasons to uh, to have that trust to put those wheels in motion and try something new on their farm. Having good relationships with our farm customers I think also allows us to really interact and help have that casual conversation to really understand what the growers needs are so we can tailor you know a customized solution to help protect that yield potential on their individual farm. Well, I think the grower's attention to detail continues to increase every year. Growers are really dialing down how they look at their big investment on every acre. And I find more growers are wanting to find a customized solution almost on a, you know, a field by field or even an acre by acre situation. And whether it's uh, variable rate planting uh, variable rate herbicide applications or fungicide applications and really starting to dial down and look at not only what they're investing, but what's the return on that investment uh, for every acre that they're farming. Looking ahead, how important is it for Bayer to continue innovating in seed technology and information resources and breeding and exploring what's just over the horizon? Yeah, well, I think the investment in research and development for any company in the egg industry is, is critical. It's kind of table stakes. Everybody uh, has, a, has a huge stake and in investment in it. And at Bayer Crop Science, we're really proud of the fact that we have a huge R&D investment globally as well as locally here in Ontario and Quebec. And so we uh, continue to work very hard at our regional research farm locations. 
know, with a small plot of work and whether it's developing new genetics, um, new traits or new herbicides that will help farmers protect their, their investment on their farm. And um, so, yeah, we, we think it's, it's critical to continuing to do business. So some of the things that we're working on, you're gonna see in the bear crop science uh, plots in the next couple of seasons and, and maybe soon in the farm at, at your place would be things like the Roundup Ready Extend Flex crop system. So this is where we take the Roundup Ready to Extend crop system that we have today with tolerance to Roundup and to Dicamba and we're adding glufosinate tolerance which gives growers the ability to spray Liberty on top of that soybean crop for uh, enhanced weed control on some of those tough to kill weeds and uh, spray them at a later date for later in the season weed control. We are also working on some new herbicides that we're excited to uh, introduce to the Canadian farmers as well. And Lotus will be a new corn herbicide that we introduce in 2021. It will be for post-emergent weed control for some of the tough to kill broadleaf weeds. And we're also introducing a new fungicide. We'll be, we'll be offering Dolero Complete will be a new fungicide that we're going to be making available uh, in 2021 for corn and soybean growers in Eastern Canada. That's it for this portion of Canada's Digital Farm Show. I want to thank Bob Thurwall of Bayer Crop Science for chatting with us today. I'm Ralph Pierce and thank you all for joining us. Hello and welcome to Canada's Digital Farm Show. I'm Ralph Pierce, Field Editor with Country Guide, and I'm here today with Sandy Hart, Business Manager with Savita International, to talk about their offerings for 2021 and some of the challenges and opportunities that he sees arising. Thank you for taking time out to chat with us today. No problem. It's a pleasure to be here, or, uh, or virtually here in any case. Tell us what's new for Savita International for 2021. What are you showcasing in the plots in terms of new soybean varieties? Thanks, Ralph. So there's there's a number of new things we're showcasing in the plot at uh, Canada's Digital Farm Show this year. Um, I think the the most exciting one from a product perspective, anyway, is our nine new uh, GMO lines that we're adding to our Advanced Pro lineup for Eastern Canada. So we have five new uh, Roundup Ready to Extend products and uh, four new Enlist E3 products. Um, we're evaluating these at a series of uh, demo sites across Ontario and Quebec. 19 private research sites and we'll be participating fully in the um, Ontario provincial trials so there'll be lots of uh, lots of yield data and hopefully an exciting story to tell come this fall uh, when we hit the street to uh, talk to producers about next year. On the non-GM side um, there's one brand new variety that we'll be introducing for the 2021 season it's called uh, Mirabelle uh, it's uh, homegrown uh, so to speak from our uh, research program here in Increment Ontario Savita Genetics uh, Mirabelle will be one of the highest protein commercial soybean varieties sold in Ontario this coming year, uh, which is exciting for us because it means a great profit opportunity for producers, um, as well as some exciting value for end users when it comes to their food manufacturing. How do, how do these differ from previous year's offerings? So on the on the GM side, Ralph, we've we've had some very strong um, R2 varieties that have carried our lineup for a number of years. And we're really looking at this year as an opportunity to match or improve upon those from a performance perspective and introduce some of the new uh, value added trait platforms being the Roundup Ready to extend um, and uh, enlist E3 in those critical maturities uh, for Savita. So varieties uh, that, that perform in step with or better than um, our previous commercial lineup with a stronger trait package to give producers more options, more added value when it comes to weed control. Um, on the, uh, the non-GM, on our IP closed loop side, 2019-2020 uh, were really transformative years for our lineup. Um, that's when our proprietary varieties from our program really started to take over. So for us, that's the uh, Panorama, Genesis, Skyline, uh, Andors that now really take on the lion's shares of our um, contracted acres. So we're certainly looking to expand those programs. Meanwhile, we'll be evaluating a uh, set of new varieties for 2022 uh, introduced um, in the non-GM space in that production year. 
What are some of the challenges facing our growers which go beyond bushels in the bin? I, I, honestly, Ralph, I think, I think one of the primary challenges facing growers today is that yield no longer makes sense as the primary metric for success in, uh, in, in, in row cropping. I, I, I think producers more and more, and, and likely so, are keeping a sharper eye on, on net profit, on, on net return per acre. Um, and, and if you look at uh, some of the challenges that, that we're facing, which are, are no secret, the uh, market price volatility, rising costs of inputs and equipment, um, challenging, unpredictable, not always favorable uh, weather patterns. Um, there's, there's a lot of ways to invest your money in your crop, um, and you need to be thinking more than just about the bushels in the bin and what's going to be left over at the end of the day to ensure the ongoing success of your operation. There's no question. The margin for error um, seems like it's, uh, it's shrinking every year, um, and, and doing a, a great job producing uh, producing, or I should say managing the elements that are within your control is, is more important than ever because uh, things are less forgiving on the weather side. We're, we're not getting bailed out, even in some of the more productive areas of, uh, of Eastern Canada. And then on the margin side, we've, um, we are at a fairly low, um, low market price for commodities. Um, we're at a uh, exchange rate disadvantage when it comes to reinvesting in equipment for our operations. So Growers, um, growers across Ontario and certainly across Eastern Canada need to have a very sharp eye on that. Not that they haven't had to in the past, but I, I think there's an argument to be made that it's as important, if not more important than ever. The biggest thing that we can do from a relationship perspective is, is provide the, the resources and support for growers to produce a, a high yielding and a high uh, quality crop so that they can take full advantage of the production premium that they sign up for in the fall. Um, and then that we can have good quality supply to, uh, to send to our customers overseas and um, continue to grow our programs and, uh, and provide more value for farmers here in Eastern Canada. So from Savita's perspective, um, we're really working with, uh, with growers to focus in on, uh, on best management practices in terms of yield and quality so that we can help their bottom line. And we've developed a couple tools too that our, that our dealers and, our, um, and certainly our sales reps have been trained on uh, to help um, make those cropping decisions based on um, your anticipated bottom line on a comparative basis between, say, GM and, uh, and closed-loop non-GM soybeans. And finally, how does the research pipeline look for Civita International, and how important is it to continue innovating, finding new directions, and exploring those new horizons? The pipeline for our non-GM and, uh, and GM research program is, is more robust than it's ever been. Um, we're currently working on a, a set of uh, high-yielding Enlist E3 varieties for um, Ontario as well as for Western Canada. Um, we're currently working with the Canadian government on the uh, registration of a non-GMO soybean that has a high oleic acid profile, uh, which is very desirable in the food industry as a uh, fryer oil. It's healthier, it, uh, it lasts longer. And that will be uh, the first variety of its kind um, in Canada. Um, and we kind of plan to release several of them. So research at, at Civita is an opportunity for us to not do our job to redistribute value by competing with others, but by, to actually create it and, and deliver it to farmers and, of course, our end use customers overseas. And we take that very seriously and, and we invest very heavily. Welcome to the Mazex campus here at Canada's Digital Farm Show. I'm Greg Stewart, agronomist with Mazex Seeds, and we're excited about talking about a few of the things that we have here at our uh, campus in terms of the Digital Farm Show in 2020. In our corn lineup, we essentially have all of the key products here. We have hybrids that have above ground and below ground protection. We have our double pros that are just above ground protection. We have an awesome lineup of conventional non-GMO hybrids. We have some of our key silage products. So a nice array of our corn products right across the spectrum. Then on the soybean front, we bring to you all of our key soybean varieties here at the show. Uh, this would include conventional soybeans. This would include Roundup Ready to Yield soybeans. Uh, it would include Extend Soybeans and Enlist Platform Soybeans. So uh, again, a real nice showing of our soybean varieties. 
And then, uh, not to bore you with just product, we have some other nice agronomy information. We talk about intensive management, uh, fungicide, nitrogen, population. We have a little bit on pod retention in soybeans. Uh, we have some forage soybeans. And we even talk a little bit about planting depth in terms of where we need to be on corn planting depth. One of the first things we want to talk about in the agronomy section is uh, our intensive management work. We'd like to give you the answers to three key questions. How does a hybrid respond to fungicide? How does a hybrid respond to varying populations? And how does a hybrid respond if you put the entire kitchen sink at it? That is extra nitrogen, extra fungicide, and extra population. So the plots behind me allow us to walk you through the idea of several of our key hybrids, how do they respond if the only thing you change is a fungicide application? Some of our hybrids really respond to fungicide, others not so much. Then of course if you're into variable rate population, we'd love to give you the range from say 26 to 38,000. Where's the sweet spot for that hybrid? And then finally, sort of our racehorse uh, estimation is if you have a high yielding field, you're going to put on high rates of fertility, you're going to apply a fungicide, you're going to push the population, which of our hybrids have the best extra gear to give you that 15 or 25 bushels that you need to pay for those extra inputs. All of that is laid out behind me. So next up is the increased interest in forage soybean. So I'm standing here in uh, our elite brand Mammoth uh, soybeans. Uh, they are an R5, so uh, really long maturity, uh, serious growth to them, and uh, an option for guys considering soybeans as supplement to their forage supplies, particularly in some of those years where we're short on forage because of, of uh, winter uh, frost heaving or dry conditions. Uh, nice to have an option of forage soybeans in your back pocket to use to s increase uh, forage supplies on your farm. At this next stop, at our Mazex campus, we uh, address that question of how do you get uh, more pods to hang on in soybeans. So it's one of the key questions that seed companies and researchers and breeders have been asking themselves for years is we get lots of flowers on soybeans, we get lots of pods started, but how do we hang on to more pods to make it to uh, final harvest? One of the ideas that researchers have been trying is to put down some extra nitrogen. So on this block right behind me, we've put down 100 pounds of nitrogen through surface applications of UAN to try to spike the nitrate level in the ground and to try to feed the beans and perhaps help them hang on to pods at a higher number and, and give us bigger yields. So I've got here just a, a little breakdown uh, pulled a few plants from our high nitrogen treatment and our low nitrogen treatment. Uh, we'll count pods here and try to see whether uh, spiking some additional nitrogen in to the bean crop, uh, it can give us a chance to hold on to more of those pods and boost uh, soybean yields across a range of our key soybean varieties. So here's the heart of our soybean lineup uh, from a Woden at 0.5 relative maturity to a superior at 2.7, uh, a full range of maturity for, uh, for a soybean lineup, and like I mentioned earlier, a full range of technologies from conventional to enlist to extend to Roundup Ready 2. Uh, it's all there for you to evaluate in terms of what soybean could work best in your farming operation in 2021. Hey, now is a great opportunity to evaluate uh, products for your farm uh, and, and particularly how they interact with your management. Did you have hybrids that did really well even though they were planted under tough conditions? Did you have hybrids that did better when you waited a bit and planted uh, later into May? Uh, what's, your, what's your rows around? What's your ear count? How do these hybrids fit into your operation? Now is a great time to try to assess uh, hybrid performance, hybrid characteristics, soybean cultivars, and how they fit into your operation. As you visit the Mazak site, as you visit Canada's digital farm show, uh, there's lots of opportunities to connect with us, to talk to our uh, territory managers, our agronomists, our plant breeders, and get a full feeling of the Mazak story and how it can fit on your farm.
Hi, I'm Dave Dembor, Product Manager for Pride Seeds, and today I'm here at the Pride Seeds demo site at Canada's Digital Farm Show. So Pride Seeds is really excited to introduce 13 new corn hybrids. Uh, we range from 3400 heat unit to 2200 heat units, so we have the wide range. We are also including experimentals. We feel like it's really, really important to show growers what is in our pipeline that could be potentially uh, for sale the following year. So it's, it's, some of these hybrids could make it, some could not, but it's really important for us to show some of these new ones as well as new introductions. This year, for the first time, we're introducing two new traits uh, in our corn, uh, the G4 and a G7. The G8s and the G2s have been around for a, a while. What the G7 is all about is above and below ground insect protection, but that is like our G8s, but more importantly, it includes western bean cutworm protection as well as corn earworm protection. You're also getting, much like your G8s, uh, herbicide tolerance for glyphosate and Liberty Link. Our second new trait that we're going to introduce this year is our G4 series hybrids. G4 means it's above ground insect protection only, but most importantly, it includes western bean cutworm protection as well as corn earworm protection. It has the same herbicide tolerance as our G2s with glyphosate only. A6757G8 is still our highest performing hybrid in the 3000 heat unit zone. Uh, still as, as a leader product in, in that above and below ground rootworm protection hybrid. Uh, gives great yield as well as good ear mold protection. Uh, beside it is our ex as, as a really strong experimental. We've introduced a new one that will fit between 7270 and 6757 this year called 7197. We've uh, tested it in plots for the last couple of years in, in Pride commercial plots and has done extremely well. So we're really excited about that one to be uh, tag teaming with 6757. So with, the, with the, the lineup that we're showcasing here, uh, we're trying to provide lots of choices for growers. Everybody has a different use. So with the, these hybrids that we're showcasing have been tested for grain, has been tested for silage, has been tested for grazing, snaplage, earlage, as well as we understand uh, there's uh, a, a market for, a very strong market for conventional hybrids. And we have a very strong uh, lineup with uh, our conventionals. Our conventional lineup ranges from 3,400 to 2,500 heat unit corn. Um, all very strong. Um, we're actually introducing a couple of new ones here that will fit between 6015 and 5910. Um, we've got a couple other ones at the 26 and 2500 heat units, 5222 as well as 5105 that will fit into the 2500 heat units. So we have a very robust and full conventional hybrid lineup to go along with our traded products. Also here at the Digital Farm Show site, we have a, our uh, silage specific block here. Silage is very important to us. We have a full lineup of silage specifics. Uh, these are not to be used for grain, but they are bred and tested for silage only. Uh, we have a, a lineup that uh, is, goes from 2100 all the way up to about 3,000 heat unit uh, corn for silage specific. Um, I'm standing in front of our flagship uh, silage hybrids, AS1047 RREDF. That has been our go-to silage uh, for, um, for beef and dairy uh, across the country. Uh, we've added in 1027 RR. As you can see with 1027, much like 1047, very leafy, very tall, excellent standability and has been tested significantly in the, for the silage market. Here's our soybean block. And, and once again, just like corn, uh, we 
our priority is to provide choices to our growers, uh, whether it's the right genetics, the right trait, the right technology, the right seed treatments. Uh, this year, uh, we, we're introducing a new trait. Our new trait is Enlist E3. So the difference between Enlist E3 and Extend is it's tolerant to the 2,4-D choline. So that gives a, another choice for growers if they do not want to go with the low volatility dicamba products that, that is, uh, you can spray on Extend. So we're excited to introduce two new Enlist varieties, uh, PS2120 and PS2720. They are a, a uh, 3,000 heat unit uh, soybean. The 2720 is a 3,200 heat unit soybean. So we're covering more in that maturity group twos with an Enlist E3 traded product. Here I'm standing in front of our flagship soybean, PS2020 XRN. This has been a tremendous uh, soybean for us for year to year over different environments, over soil types, over row widths. It's got great yield uh, potential as well as great defensive qualities uh, such as ear mold, phytophthora, sudden death syndrome. And that's something that we really, really look hard at when we're evaluating soybeans. And you can see in this block, uh, you're going to see some experimentals and that's important just like uh, it was with corn where we evaluate experimentals that are in our near pipeline where we're, we actually will evaluate even in this uh, show site. You can see as you know in this site it's a really rich loam, high fertility. The beans do get growthy but what we do get out of it is you know white mold tolerance, standability. So. Although it's just a, a demo plot, we do take this to, uh, we do evaluate uh, defensive characteristics of soybeans, and this is a great opportunity. We feel like we're offering a lot of choices depending on your farm uh, use, your farming practices, and your environment. Thanks for joining us at the Pride Seeds demonstration site here at Canada's Digital Farm Show. Please feel free to visit us at the Pride Seeds virtual booth. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact any of our reps. Here at Pride Seeds, we try to provide as many choices and options for the farmer's needs as possible. Hope you enjoy the rest of the show.